Welcome back to Metroid Zero Mission. Last time, we killed Kraid, who was a lot bigger than he was supposed to be. So let's leave Kraid. I've had enough of this place. Not to kick him man while he's down, but I literally forgot we fought Kraid last time. <laughs> I did blow him up very easily. My house rule was gonna be just like, I can be hit by major bosses, because you know, they're, they're big guys, they're supposed to be spectacles, but like, the best run I had, I just chumped him, so I just shrugged and was like, alright, well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also got the speed booster, which allows us to do stuff like that right there. That, however, is nowhere near the most complicated thing you'll do with the speed booster. <laughs> if you want to get 100% in a Metroid game, good fucking luck. <laughs> Ride this platform up, and we get a cutscene. Hmm. I do believe that someone has killed my best friend, Kraid! Gonna get her ass! Oh, is that the voice we have to use for Ridley so we don't get sued by Red Spray? I mean, you can do whatever you want. I just have no confidence in a shrill voice, so, uh, I'm not going to. <laughs> Instead, I'm just going to repurpose Scissor Man because he doesn't get enough work as it is. Alright, Magical Statue, tell us where to go next. And our next goal is, ow, oh, under there. <laughs> you figure, figure it out if you like exploring so much, you jerk. Alright, so yeah, the, this area basically just exists so that we can pick up that Chozo hint. Uh, otherwise, let's just keep moving on. Uh, so, um... Today, speaking of good luck, uh, and doing things in Metroid, uh, we're gonna be doing, uh, an early pickup at some point. Because, apparently, uh, I just shrugged and thought, eh, it saves time. The guide I'm using does it, so, why not? <laughs> the real reason is, it's pretty tricky to do, actually. Uh, but for the time being, though, yeah, no, just, in general, Metroid does ask quite a bit of the player if they want to go for 100%, uh, at least in the games that I've played. I don't know Prime as well at all, really. I've seen the first game a bunch. I know, like, nothing of 2 and 3, but, like, of the main series Metroids, uh, boy, they get very tricky with some of their item collections. Like, it's not just finding them. Sometimes it's a combination of how would you ever know that's there without a guide and how would you be able to collect this without watching a guide like 10 times and figuring out what you're supposed to do with your fingers. Yeah. That was a common thing in Dread of like, okay, I found the thing. Now how the fuck do I do that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I 100%ed I Dread, not quickly of course, but, you know, I would say that might even be like one of the easier games to 100%, but, oh god, some of the speed booster ones in that are just brutal. Yeah, I was also kind of thinking that, just in terms of like, it was just the speed booster ones, like you've already done some stuff in this game that made me go, okay, what the fuck, how are you supposed to do that? <laughs> I will say, bomb jumping is probably one of the ones that's, like, easier to actually pull off than you might think. Oh, green door. Can't do anything about that yet. But yeah, like, bomb jumping feels kind of awkward, but, like, for me at least, it's just a case of, like, eventually you'll get it if you keep trying. Even if you do it kind of haphazardly, eventually you'll just get the right timing on those bombs to boost your way up. That's just a matter of patience. 
Alright, what do we get here? We get High Jump, which is actually two abilities in one. So, say hello to Jump. Of course, uh, this makes it so you jump higher. However, you can also jump as a morph ball. Uh, so if you don't want to do some of the more simple bomb jumping uh, techniques, uh, you can just now jump instead. Now that being said, certain uh, items do require you to bomb jump, like the uh, energy tank I got a while back. Uh, y you still need to bomb jump for that, but for simple little things, uh, little jumps, you can just jump now. It's, it's good, you don't need to de-transform, you don't need to do that. And, oh, can't do that one, because that's a missile. No matter. Okay, well, we've got this guy, who, according to the music, is just the most terrifying thing you've ever seen. I mean, I'm not inclined to argue with that. It's very gross, but god, the music in this game goes so hard, in the weirdest spots. I mean, look, props to the musician, the soundtrack is pretty amazing, but yeah, no, like, two of the most eerie songs I can recall in this game are just tucked away into look at this weird larvae or grub or whatever the hell this is, and you got an item that you don't know what it is. Do you see this bug? Sick shit, am I right? <laughs> See this item? You don't know what that does, and that's giving you so much anxiety. Alright, so that stuff is cleared, but, you know, we just saw a weird bug that doesn't actually help me, uh, progress. So I got a few items. I uh, got the high jump. Got the Morph Ball jump. So, what's next for Samus? Well, looking at the runtime, I believe uh, I am about to hit the point where I get a thing early. It's either that or we get a major ability. But I'm pretty sure, considering this area is a little bit burned into my brain, uh, you're about to see some bullshit in a few minutes. Alright, I eagerly await the bullshit. Alright, so, speed booster. One thing you need to know about it is that you do need to hold it in room transitions, that's very important. Uh, in order to stock a uh, boost, you do need to press down. Uh, but don't press down too many times or you'll just morph ball. Anyway, uh, yeah, you can also uh, do that. You do need to manually stop, by the way. And uh, yeah, you can actually keep a, a speed boost for quite a while. And do this. So yeah, uh, fun fact about Zero Mission, uh, there are items in this game that weren't in the original Metroid, and the cool thing is, they don't actually appear until, like, really late in the game for reasons. Uh, so normally you would not be able to find super missiles ever if you were playing the original. Uh, but yeah, no, you get super missiles here, and they are incredibly powerful, but of course, they are far less, uh, abundant than normal missiles. They also open green doors, so I really can't use any in case I see a green door. Which, again, if you see a green door from now on, and I can open it, yeah, that's not something I'd be able to do if I were playing the game normally. Man, I fucking hate Shine Spark. <laughs> <laughs> shine Sparking is some bullshit, yeah. Oh, that took me so many attempts. Like, it's cool, but it's never as cool as you want it to be. It's always just annoying. Yeah, it... Mm. Like, I know in Dread there are some times where you can use it during a boss and it, like, one-shots them. Except in one instance, which is also kind of cool in its own right. But... Man, I feel like... Shine Sparking should be either easier to do or, like, more powerful. Like, you should be able to one-shot every boss in the game by Shine Sparking. <laughs> mm-hmm. The boss should be minding their own business, and then Sama should just fly <laughs> in and shoulder tackle them. Yes, you should be able to do the Shine Spark from outside the boss arena and just fly in and murder them immediately. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so we've got a puzzle here. Uh, so you know those bugs that drain Samus's life energy? They will also drain the vitality of whatever the hell that plant is. So you basically just want to lead them into uh, the plant and they'll just kind of eat away at it. It's not a complex puzzle, but it's neat. Uh, I think it's a pretty cool way of kind of repurposing this really tiny enemy type that doesn't normally do much. Yeah. It especially is just like a cool thing for a game like this. Mm. Oh, and we got the Varia suit. You could call it parental affection. I know, okay, so like, that came at the end of a very good scene in the manga, but I did kind of laugh a bit. <laughs> at just the line, it's the Varia suit, you could call it parental affection. I don't know why you'd call it that, but sure. <laughs> but yeah, now in the last chapter, Sama speaks to the spirit of Grey Voice. Uh, and, you know, they talk for a bit, and that's, that's cool, that's nice. But yeah, no, it's, that's just how the Varia suit is described. Alright, so, Salmas is now looking a little more like she does in any given piece of, uh, media. <laughs> if you've seen promotional art of Salmas, here she is. This is her proper suit now. So, we can now survive extreme temperatures and some pits of lava slash acid. I say some because there are some pits that still damage you. And, um, okay, between you and me... I can barely tell the difference between the- I, I- if you put them side by side, I would not know which one would harm you. And that's just like a constant problem in the Metroid series, is like, they want to have damage pits, and then they want to give you an ability to negate the damage pits, but they still want some damage pits in there. Uh, and like, usually I- f I thought the solution was like, oh well, acid is also technically a different thing. Uh, and, you know, uh, it's a different obstacle, so theoretically you'd be able to see, or, or, like, theoretically you'd be able to see the difference, but, like, the description says I should be protected from acid, too, so, even if they look different, I don't know which one hurts, I, I don't know which one is lava and acid plus. So, honestly, uh, pro tip is to just not bother at all, actually. Don't bother... If you need to check, uh, in case there's, oh, I don't know, fake pits of lava or something, uh, just dip your toes in. Just stick near a ledge, dip your toes in. If it hurts, it's not a fake pit. If it vanishes, then you can curse the game designers, because I'm gonna level with you, that's kind of a dick move. These statues are just sending you back and forth. Yeah, <laughs> they are. Like, complaining about backtracking in a game like this is stupid, but, like... I feel like you should do your best to not draw attention to it like that. Yeah, so that's the thing about Metroidvania games, is everybody likes to talk about how open they are, but usually they aren't, like, super open. They usually have a path and there's a little bit of backtracking, uh, so that the player can go, Oh hey, I remember that obstacle type or that barrier type. I can go back to this area and explore there now, and it is genuinely a good feeling to be able to recall stuff and just uh, go back to it, but I don't think Zero Mission's map is like super well made. It's, you know, they revamped it a little bit for the sake of the remake, but it is mostly the Metroid 1 map. It really does feel like you are just doing more back and forth than usual. Like, a good Metroidvania game will disguise the fact that you are constantly backtracking. It has ways of making you think, no, that's not the case. And like I said, if you sign up for a game like this, you know what you're getting into. Playing in Metroidvania and complaining about backtracking is like playing Pokemon and complaining about capturing monsters. Like, what did you expect? You came here. People also complain about the Chozo hints, but I don't think anything in this game is quite distinct enough to really actively make you recall things all the time. People complain about the, like, 10 second sequences in Dread where they stop you from going backwards so they can do a set piece. And that is the thing that makes zero sense to me. You can't explore while the room is while the room is filling up with lava. You can't do that. You have to get away from the lava. <laughs> this sequence lasts like two minutes at the most. What are you bad about? <laughs> Sometimes game designers don't just make one big map and say, oh, and shrug. Sometimes they do have intent. 
God, the only time that has worked that I can think of is fucking Breath of the Wild and probably Tears of the Kingdom. I haven't played it yet. That is the only time where, like, just throwing you in a map and saying, Go nuts, kid, has actually worked that I can think of. Also, should we argue about whether it's the Varius suit or the Varius suit? Anyway, nap time for Samus. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> it's, suppo it's probably supposed to be Varia because it creates a barrier, and you can see the barrier in the, uh, the manual for the original Metroid.